All right, Tony. Yes. Tony, uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? Uh, Sarasota, Florida. And tell me about your family. You had both your parents when you were a kid? Uh, yes, I did. Uh, my parents were based in the entertainment field. My father uh, from Poland and my mother Hungarian. Uh, father was with the Ringling Brothers Circus as a bear trainer and mother was an international model and also produced uh, circuses and Las Vegas style shows. And so I was raised in the entertainment field 100% here in America and overseas. And how would you describe your childhood? Absolutely amazing when it came to family, uh, surroundings, friends. Um, I had some issue being gay and openly gay back in the uh, 70s. Um, that was a bit of a problem, but being in the entertainment field, it's much more accepting. So that, that worked out. Um, I was just, I was a content and happy child. I can't say anything negative on my childhood. Um, traveled a lot, got the opportunity of seeing a lot of culture. Um, just an amazing upbringing, um, very worldly, open to accepting everyone, uh, religion, creed, race, homosexuality, whatever. We were open to everything in our family and, and household. Um, and that made it quite a difference. Uh, occasional issues that did happen in life. Um, something that I had suppressed for decades um, was very interesting to come to grasp and understanding of was the fact that at 12 years old I did experience molestation from someone that the family knew. Um, that took me to a darker place at that time, being gay, thinking this was okay because I looked preteen, I looked like a little girl, I acted like a little girl. And this person took advantage of that, played up the whole, oh, little princess type thing. And it, very, it took many years for me to, I had blocked it out and still don't remember a lot of the details, but remember enough that It changed me in a certain way to where my caring and loving and the endearment that I wanted to show others was stronger because there was an innocence that was taken at that time. And yet, even growing up and still now, I'm almost 50 years old, I still have the heart and the soul of a female. So my I care and love for everyone, I, I want to, make everything better for everybody. Um, I'm like a mother hen, a big brother, a big sister, you know, a mother, a godmother. Um, I try to be the real, in the circle I'm in now of sex offenders, something I've noticed with most of them is they don't have support. They don't have a family that's loving them or embracing them. And sometimes family comes from the family we make. I've learned that in the gay world, I guess I'll say, because drag queens do that. They have the houses where there's a house mother and all these gaybies, as they will call them, and the house mother will take them in under their wings and help show them what life is about on positive and show them positivities. Because of the love and nurturing I had growing up from all my circus family, my aunts, my circus uncles and, and showbiz family, extended family that still goes beyond anything I could imagine on several continents, I still have that that want and need to help others. The mistake I made, and I will not justify what I did, 
which I did touch a 12-year-old child in an inappropriate manner. I will ne that will never be justified. I won't accept be it's because something that happened to me in the past. We make our own decisions on what we're going to do. But there's a time that my heart will always be broken on the fact that I hurt a child and I affected them. What I went through when I was 12 was devastating because there, it was the full gamut of a sexual encounter. Um, I have no explanation as to what transpired and why I, I've been trying to dig deeply for many years. On the night that my offense took place, it was a matter of seconds. It was not a long term. It was not premeditated. It was a short period of time, literally seconds. Even the mindset, it was not there to touch a child. I like men, I like hairy men. I have since I was young. This didn't fit my criteria of what my, my sexual interests were. Regretful, I'm devastated, I hurt somebody. And for someone like me who wants to only help others and bring positivity that it's taken a long time for me to forgive myself and I'm still working on that. In the entertainment field, I've been lucky I produced shows. I was an entertainer, singer. Um, I did a number of different characters, um, male and female and costume designer, choreographer, that world of the entertainment field, you, it's easy to get lost in the magic of all that, but the purpose of everything I've ever tried to do was to make people forget their troubles for a while. And even if it's just for that hour and a half or two hours, they come to see the performance. Excuse me, and now, I've had to find myself again because I hurt a child. Because even, even though the reality is it was, it was seconds, that will last a lifetime. I know what happened to me was a short period of time. I'm assuming, but it did, it affected my outlook on what love is. Um, I'm a firm believer, I don't, I've never believed in one night stands. I prefer the idea of love, compassion, romance, very old school that way. Um, but now, if I could apologize to him with all my heart, with all of my heart, I'm sorry. I hope with therapy, you will be able to get better. Um, I hope you will get past it. I am not a monster. Many of us that live with the title of sex offender, we are not monsters. I don't believe any of us are, but there are some people that are truly ill. Um, they, ha they cannot help what they do. And there are others that truly make mistakes, would never offend again. There are others that unfortunately are caught up in this Romeo Juliet type of situation where they were both underage when they started a relationship and then the boy or the girl became 18 and the other was still underage and that becomes an issue. And for many parents, legal actions are then taken. And there are many people here in that situation that live in this park. Others that are set up on the sting operations online and 
if you're looking for something like that online, I don't think you should. That's the negatives. Um, if you need therapy, find it. But admit who you are and what your situation is, in my opinion. I deal with, I, like I say, play the endearing mother hen here, so I hear a lot of the stories. And I love the fact that some are honest enough to say they need help and therapy is helping them. When it's the right therapist and if they're tr going and working on the right issue, not everybody has the same stamp on them as far as if you're a sex offender, you should not have the same therapy if you are a rapist or if you are a molester or if you are someone into pornography. There are different levels and that's something so important for people to understand. We're not all the same. But under all of it, we're still human and we all matter. What are your biggest regrets? My biggest regret is that when my personal life and professional life were spiraling in opposite and crazy directions, I did not stop myself and just take a minute to put everything back in check. I allowed myself very briefly to go to a dark place and a place that's not a norm. That's why I still, I still fight this within myself trying to understand why I would allow myself to go there. Why I would subject someone I barely knew to even a microsecond of touching them inappropriately. That, I will forever have a regret. I will try to learn to accept and understand, and I'm slowly working on that, but I still have, that will always be a work in progress, but I think that's everyone. Um, but my regret is that I, I hurt a child unintentionally and there was no satisfaction. That's, there was no re there wasn't a reason for me to do this. It wasn't, it wasn't my desire. An honest mistake, I allowed my mind to go to a bad, a dark place and I, put myself and, and somebody else in a very terrible position. Nothing makes it okay. When I think back to what happened to me and certain details he tried to make it affectionate and kind with me. And yet he was crossing the line. There's no, even when we get past that in our lives, it's still in the back of your mind whether you look at it as a positive or hurtful, whatever, it's still there. It's a memory that doesn't leave you. And as a person who made that mistake and hurt somebody, it's the same. No matter how great and how much help I want to give others, how much I want to do for others. And I've always been like that. It's nothing new. That's just who I've been. I want to help and nurture others. In the back of my mind, I still, I hurt someone. Do you feel like if what happened to you as a child at 12 had not happened, that this may have not, 
You have not done this? You wouldn't have done this? I've done a, I'm still up in the air on that. I don't know because I know some people who've had absolutely no molestation in their life and a fairly good life and had, and offended and never had an issue and, and there was no basis they couldn't come up with. Um, is it possible? Yes. I haven't seen enough studies yet, nor have I been able to come up with the uh, answers on my own with that. I don't believe in placing blame on others for, one, for one's actions. Um, I did that, I made the mistake. I, I'm not a huge drinker. I've gone through a couple of periods in my life where I would drink alcohol, sometimes to excess, but that, it was a minute amount of times in life. And I think in my particular situation that may have played a role you because you, your inhibitions. Are you talking about it happened? I, I do believe, even, if, even though it took me very little to drink to become intoxicated, I do believe that alcohol did play a role in it. Um, because I wasn't one to drink on a regular basis. Um, even now, I don't drink. I have had a couple of drinks here and there in the past two years, um, five years really, but um, I don't, I think that had to have played a role. It was being in the dark place when your world becomes spiraling out of control, personal life, mother passing away, um, if health issues around yourself and other people, and then you allow yourself to take a depressant, which is alcohol, it makes you do things that you normally wouldn't do. So I almost, I want to th say it's the combination of all those things that ball, balled up that made that night happen. And that very possibly what happened as a youngster. See, for me, it wasn't a traumatic necessarily experience because it was, I was treated like the little princess. I was, it was all beautiful and this is how it was supposed to be, Prince Charming type of thing. And then the pain came and there was pain and that I do remember. So I, I can't say that they, go hand in hand for myself, maybe for others, but for myself, I don't think I can say they go hand in hand. I do think that the combination of, as I say, sadness, world spiraling out of control, and allowing myself to have alcohol had to have played a role in that because in any regular frame of mind, I absolutely have no interest in being with anyone that isn't, <laughs> Harry <laughs> and, and a full grown, full grown man. So, in my particular case, I, we find we try to make it. I try to find the ex, you can't find excuses for what you've done. You have to take responsibility. But I think a combination of all these things together did lead to what happened in my life and changed my life now forever. In some ways, spiritual ways and emotional ways, maybe a positive because I've become more understanding about things in the world and people. In other ways, it's a nightmare. How has your, how has your family reacted to, to this? Um, my father, old school European, was very embracing. Those that knew me and do know me um, were surprised and shocked, but they also were understanding with, they knew who I was before all this, that they knew the caring and loving person. And 
the mistakes that I've been lucky that most of my friends and family have overlooked the mistake. Um, and even though they've accepted and, under, and the love is still there, it doesn't take away, it's still in my head. Um, how often does it come up in your, in your thought, how often is it in your thoughts? I'm sorry. How, how often do you uh, revisit the, it's this? It's actually, I, the, it's, the, what brought me here, the, actually being uh, an offender, affects me every day. I think about it daily. I pray on it. Um, and I try to continue learning, not just for myself, but listening to others and reading, doing as much research as I can to understand what makes this happen. Not everyone has all the answers. For me, it's something I do, I deal with every day. I, it breaks my heart. What's the most important lesson you've learned? The most important lesson in all of this, when you feel your life spiraling out of control, ask for help before you take it to another level, whether it's molestation or suicide or driving under the influence. If you feel yourself spiraling out of control in any way, shape, or form, and life is more than you can handle, to me, it's okay to ask for help. Where too many people are expected in the world to not have problems, to not need help, and I really believe that's one of the biggest mistakes now that you, when you asked, my biggest mistake is I didn't ask for help before it went, got that far. There's nothing wrong in admitting defeat, and sometimes world, the world seems to defeat us, and the reality is when you speak with somebody and you put the words out there, you realize you're still more powerful and you can conquer over everything. <coughs> hmm. Ask for help. How long have you been in a wheelchair? Three and a half years. I have um, spinal, uh, spinal issues and heart issues and a number of other health issues that are altering my life. And, but I'm still here and I stay strong. I stay positive. Um, we are looking at surgeries coming very soon that I've had a heart surgery two months ago, um, going for spinal surgery after another heart surgery, another heart surgery is coming up and then uh, spinal surgery following that and may not be able to make it help me walk, but it'll take the pain away. And I just stay positive, whether I'm six foot four standing up or <laughs> four foot seven in a chair. I love everybody and I'm going to be a, a cheerleader for anyone I can to help them get through their problems and be there for those that need help and need to call out. All right, Tony, thank you so much for talking with me. I enjoyed this very much.